a woman. So there's so many issues of um, um, human rights violation, discrimination that has been practiced in the Bahamas besides just the incest that um, um, Amulet uh, talked about, which is also timely. You know, there's the situation of discrimination in the public schools, and I make no excuses for my uh, community for not having our own school. I, I, I find no um, 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 solace in trying to cover up for my, my movement's weakness or shortcomings. Um, but I also commend um, um, the Andaba project and uh, uh, Jaian for um, the former administration who had helped out, uh, or those who had helped in the former administration, like Sister Terry, who also um, Ms. Rastafari, um, um, and helping out with the um, um, after school program in Father Street. However, there are situations with uh, Empress Oisha last year. There was a situation in the 90s with um, um, Dwayne Thurston and his family when he uh, tried to enter his children in Kingsway Academy and they were refused based on religion. Okay, Religion discrimination is um, um, should be protected by the, the Bahamas laws. Um, Chapter 3 of the Constitution, Independence Order, um, uh, Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But as our leader often say, until Article 1 is fulfilled, that all man is created equal, endowed with conscience and reason, and should act towards each other in the spirit of brotherhood. Until Article 1 is fulfilled, the other 29 articles is written in vain. You know? So, um, um, I would like to um, uh, point out some of the, the laws that, that, that this country um, um, can't overlook from time to time. You have the Dowell, the, the um, um, Mandela versus Dowell Lee, 1983, in the uh, appeal, appeal court case number 548, also King Ansel Voices to Police, 1979, uh, New Zealand Law Report, case uh, 531, the, also the, the um, Anton Folks Voices to Commission of Police, the 29th of September, 1995, case number 134, uh, the, the Privy Council ruling on the, um, um, the, the Commission for Racial Equality, which is also called the Dawkins decision. Um, as I said before, the Bahamas Constitution, Chapter 3, Article 15 to 30. Uh, the Organization of African Unities, um, uh, Black Agenda, and the uh, United, uh, United Nations Universal um, Declaration of Human Rights. Also, there's a precedence that gives us um, um, a victory in the, in the case with Pri Santan folks um, um, that was handed down sometime in the 1800s, 1839, um, um, sometime around um, um, the time of the abolition of slavery. So um, um, this is a long history for us, you know. Um, we also have contacted the U.S. State Department. Um, I think it's the Department, U.S. State Department Office for International Freedom of uh, Religious, uh, inter International Religious Freedom under the auspices of the EABIC, the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, Miami branch. But um, um, I'm saying all this to say that the same way how child abuse, sexual abuse, and incest have its effect on people. With the Rastafari movement, I think it's just, it has an effect on some of our brethren. As you notice, sometimes when um, brethren come to functions like this, they would 
kind of be the wallpaper and stay way in the back. They don't, they, they don't feel worthy, you know. But uh, there's a quote in the Bible that said that a, a light should not be placed under a bushel, but should be placed on a lampstand where, you know, all in the house could really benefit from the light. And, you know, as we know, Rastafari is the light of this world. And this is where such protest, protest should be, you know. Giving thanks again for the um, uh, black food, um, having this conference for activists like myself to come and express our views and put forth some form of plan of action, you know. But um, um, the Rasta movement as, you know, as we all know the history, has been on the forefront of African spirituality from the 30s in the Western world. Um, as we heard from Muda Baruch and the Ndaba project um, uh, last year, you know, we, we, have, we have achieved so much in a few years. Um, most of the religions it's like 2,000 years old. The Rasta movement is not quite 100 years old as yet. But um, uh, we have had, uh, so far, Rasta King in Malawi um, um, last year, the 6th of December. Um, I could go on and on to, 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 to point out the, the achievements that the, the Rasta movement has made through music, uh, culture, uh, black identity, um, um, lock scale, uh, black beauty, um, uh, self-esteem, and so forth and so forth. Yet, you know, as a, as a rule, the, Rasta, the Rastafari movement do not practice discrimination. This is why a lot of people say we need to um, um, screen our members because anybody could be a Rasta. The, 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 the term Rastafari as we look at the word Ras, which is an Ethiopian noble, nobody can deny a black person or a person of African descent um, um, their true identity. All right, no one could deny that a, 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 a person of African descent cannot be a Rasta. So this is why the Rasta movement per se do not in theory practice discrimination but the worst thing uh, one can become is to uh, become that which one first started out to despise um, um, we see this in a political sense that uh, one political group would be despised and as soon as they get in power they practice the same form of discrimination against a more passive group, all right? So, um, um, you know, in traveling to places like Jamaica, you hear terms like um, foreign dread, foreign bubble, you know, and, and it's, it's a subtle form of discrimination to a certain extent because um, there's no hybrid as such as a, a, a foreign African, um, um, Afri the, the, the movement is all inclusive to, to Africa. So what I am implying is that, you know, even as, 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 as Rastafari brethren, we too could become careless and begin to practice the same form of discrimination among someone because of their ethnicity or where they were born. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, As, 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 I, as, as I was saying, um, um, some of the positive attributes of Rastafari is to um, um, transcend racial and cultural barriers. Because we accept people of all races. You have uh, Europeans who are Rastafari without being discriminated in the movement, you know. However, um, it's not such the such the same for for us from the Bahamas government because when the movement first 
became visible in the 80s, there used to be groups of vigilante that would go around and cut a Rastaman locks with a bottle, you know, with a broken bottle and, you know, use the, 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 the other part to give him a few stabs to discourage him from, you know, standing or, or standing against the status quo or flowing against the tide, which is the tide of colonialism and imperialism, you know. However, this didn't seem to um, um, curtail our struggle. The Rastafari movement has, as well, Alex said, been the vanguard for the, uh, the Black Power movement in the Western world. All right? You know, so I wouldn't like to take up much time with the, with the reason because I know we have a, a slate of speakers, but I would like to um, uh, share something here from the father of African unity, our president, Gordon King, Eli Selassie, who shared his words in the United Nations that until the philosophy that holds one race superior and is finally and permanently discredited and abundant. That until there's no longer first class and second class citizens of any nation, that until the color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes, that until the basic human rights are equally guaranteed to all without regard to race, that until that day, the dream of lasting peace, world citizenship, the rule of international morality will remain but a fleeting illusion to, to be pursued but never attained. That until the ignoble and unhappy regime that hold our brothers in Angola, in Mozambique, in South Africa, in subhuman bondage have been toppled and destroyed. Until bigotry and prejudice and maliciousness and inhuman self-interest is replaced by understanding, tolerance and goodwill. Until all Africans stand and speak as free beings equal in the eyes of all men as they are in the eyes of heaven. Until that day, the African continent will not know peace. We Africans will fight if necessary, and we know that we shall win as we are confident in the victory of good over evil. You might be familiar with that speech from the Bob Marley song, War, but these are the words of His Divine Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie, to, in his address to the uh, United Nations in 1963. You know, so, um, I will end my uh, presentation on His Majesty's words, and if any questions, I will gladly entertain.